Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be smoking an Indonesian Klobot cigarette for the first time, which I will admit I am very excited to do, as I am expecting these cigarettes right here to be very different from literally every cigarette I've ever tried before. And so as such, I certainly am quite excited to see how these actually are and what the differences actually are between literally every other cigarette I've ever tried before. And in general, I certainly am just quite excited to try an Indonesian Klobot cigarette for the first time in today's video. And I am also quite excited to let you guys know what I think of them as well. But I do suppose before I go any further into the video, I should probably explain what a Klobot cigarette actually is. As if I don't explain what a Klobot cigarette is, this video might be a little bit confusing to y'all. So what is a Klobot cigarette? Well, before I actually explain what a Klobot cigarette is, I first need to explain what a clove cigarette is, because a Klobot is a type of Kretek, also known as clove cigarette. So what is a Kretek? or a clove cigarette? Well, a clove cigarette is a type of cigarette that contains clove, which of course makes your mouth a little bit numb and everything like that kind of thing, which is pretty nice. Clove cigarettes were originally invented in Indonesia a couple hundred years ago now, from what I can tell at least. And today, within Indonesia, they are extremely popular, making up, I want to say, over 90% of the Indonesian cigarette market, which is pretty wild if I do say so myself. And today, the vast majority of Kretex, of clove cigarettes sold both within Indonesia and out, are made with normal cigarette rolling paper. But it wasn't always that way. That only started to happen in the early 1900s, before normal cigarette paper first became popular in Indonesia, all clove cigarettes were Klobots. That's right, Klobots are the original, the traditional form of clove cigarettes. And instead of being rolled with cigarette rolling paper, they are instead rolled with dried corn husk, which is pretty interesting if I do say so myself. And in fact, the name Klobot actually means husk in English, which is pretty cool if I do say so myself. Now, the idea of rolling a cigarette with dried corn husk is not unique to Indonesia, I do want to acknowledge. There are other countries around the world which have their own take on the same concept. Brazil, for example, has uh, dried corn husk rolled cigarettes called Balheros, which only contain tobacco, no clove, but still pretty interesting, that is for sure. These days within Indonesia, Klobot cigarettes are much more of a niche product than not. However, according to Gudangaram's website, they do still maintain a niche popularity with people who live in rural East Java, which is an island in Indonesia, along with a niche popularity and an older population in Indonesia as well. And I don't think Klobot cigarettes are ever going to go away, if I had to guess, because from what I can tell at least, based off of the light reading I did, Klobot cigarettes are very much considered to be a quite possibly national heritage thing in Indonesia. And so as such, it's very doubtful that they're ever going to go away. But nonetheless, I am still very, very, very thankful that Klobot cigarettes are still made to this day, even though they're such a niche product now, because otherwise I wouldn't have the opportunity to try them for the first time in today's video. Now, would I? I think I sufficiently explained what a Klobot cigarette actually is to summarize just a little bit. It is the original form of clove cigarettes from Indonesia that are, instead of being rolled with uh, cigarette paper, are instead rolled with dried horn, cor with dried horn dust. <laughs> I've got my words all jumbled up. Instead of being rolled with normal cigarette paper, they are instead rolled with dried corn husk. Pretty interesting stuff, to say the least, that is for sure. And what I have with me today, the Klobot I have with me today, from what I can tell at least, is the most popular Klobot for sale on the Indonesian market. It is the Gudangaram Klobot Kretek Istwama Manis, which translates to Sweet Special, which is pretty interesting if I do say so myself. 
Gudang Aram, for context, is the largest clove cigarette company within Indonesia. And so I do suppose it's no surprise that the clobot they make would be the most popular clobot offered in Indonesia as well. But I've heard that these are not only the most sold and most popular clobot within Indonesia just because Gudang Aram makes them, but I've also heard that these are very good as well. And so, of course, I'm looking forward to seeing just how good they actually are. These clobots supposedly contain 32 milligrams of tar and 1.9 milligrams of nicotine. Now, granted, it doesn't actually say that anywhere on the packaging, and I got that uh, those numbers from a third-party source, so who knows how true that actually is. But if that is true, it's honestly kind of surprising how low the tar and nicotine levels are in these cigarettes. I've tried unfiltered, normal cigarette paper rolled clove cigarettes from Indonesia before, which have significantly more tar and just a little bit more nicotine. So it is quite surprising for these to be as low in the numbers as they are, I will admit. I was figuring with a corn husk wrapper that these were probably going to um, contain more tar and everything like that because I was figuring that a corn husk wrapper would probably make for a lot more tar, but maybe not in all honesty, maybe not very interesting if I do say so myself. I feel like there's something else I wanted to say. Was there anything else I wanted to say about the Gooding Aram Cobalt, uh, not Cobalt, Clobalt. Cobalt is a, is like, is like an element or a mineral or something like that kind of thing. Globot is a type of Indonesian cigarette. I'm getting more words all jumbled up. But I feel like there was something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember what else I wanted to say. Hey, how's it going? Jacob Editing Jones here. I realized what I forgot to say. And what I forgot to say was a huge shout out to the anonymous viewer from Indonesia who was nice enough to give me the Indonesian Clobot cigarettes that I made a video about today. Thank you so much to the anonymous viewer from Indonesia for being nice enough to give me some Indonesian Clobots for me to try for the first time. I really, really, really do appreciate it. I think that's all I had to say, though. Just wanted to go ahead and share my appreciation. This video would literally not be possible without you, my man. Thank you so much for uh, your contribution to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Hope y'all enjoy the rest of the video. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. I'm thinking maybe I wanted to say that, of course, these are not the only Clobot cigarettes still sold within Indonesia. There are a variety of other big and small companies still producing Clobots in Indonesia. Um, but of course, these, from what I can tell at least, are the most popular ones. If I am looking at information correctly and everything like that kind of thing. I think that's everything I wanted to say for my overall intro. And so now I, I do suppose it's time for me to quickly take a look at this packaging, which is quite different from what I've ever seen before from a tobacco product. Then after that, after I go over the packaging, I do think I'm going to go ahead and get it all opened up. I'm going to go ahead and get one of the Clobot cigarettes all out. I'm going to go and take a look at what they actually look like, what they feel like, and what the quality of them is like. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and get one all lit up. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know what a Clobot cigarette actually is, I do suppose. But first off, let's just go ahead and I guess take a look at the packaging, which we can see is quite different. We can see it's wrapped in cellophane, as is normal with most tobacco products these days, or with most cigarettes these days, I do suppose is the right way of putting it. But as we can see, it's just wrapped in cellophane, but then on the inside of the cellophane, there's like a sticker right here, which is kind of stuck on some sort of like semi-transparent sort of, I'd have to say, like almost like husk looking paper. There does appear to be a little bit of a design on it or something like that kind of thing, kind of like stretch in that way or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what's under the cellophane, in all honesty, is definitely a little bit different, that is for sure. In the middle of the cellophane, in the middle of the paper going around the cigarettes themselves, we can see there is a Gooding Aram sort of diamond right here, and it has the normal sort of Gooding Aram logo on it and everything like that kind of thing, but definitely made to look a little bit more classic in my personal opinion. It's definitely not a modern look, and if anything, it looks quite retro, which I think is kind of what they're going for with these cigarettes, as these are, of course, well, as said, the original form of Kretex from Indonesia. Just says Gooding Aram right there, all in white on a 
uh, dark blue on a navy blue uh, background, I definitely have to say, which just stretches just over like that. Then above the Gooding Rum text, we can just see it just says uh, Clobot uh, Kretek right there, and it just says uh, Rokok right there. Rokok, if I remember correctly, just means cigarette in Indonesian. Then under all of that white text right there, there in navy blue, it just says T-J-A-P. I'm not sure if that's another word. I, I don't know what it means in all honesty. I don't know if that's an acronym. If I had to figure it's another word, I just have no clue what it means, frankly. Put under the Gudingaram uh, text right there, it just says uh, isi 6 bt um, which I think BT is just an acronym for Batang, um, if I remember correctly. So I want to say that just means that uh, it's basically just saying that this pack right here contains six, um, which it does only contain six. It's clarifying that because Gooding Rom also makes a pack of Clobots, which contains 12 instead of six. Then under all of that right there, we could see the classic Gooding Rom, uh, like sort of like design right here and everything like that kind of thing. A bunch of sort of like train ra 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 salt warehouses or train ra rail houses. I can't remember exactly what it is in all honesty. I'm getting my words all in a bind today, I ain't gonna lie, but we can see like some train tracks right here, and then we can see some like uh, warehouses right here and everything like that kind of thing. I believe these are salt warehouses, if I remember correctly, and these would be the train tracks to transport all of the salt and everything like that. If I am remembering correctly, at least I could very well be wrong. To the side of the warehouses, there's some more white text right there, and it just says pending number uh, 147731. I wonder if they're like patent pending for a Clobot or something like that kind of thing. I'm not sure what that means or it, maybe if it's like patent pending or like copyright pending for the logo or something like that kind of thing. I'm not exactly sure why they have that text right there. Under all of the designs right here though on a red background down here we can see there is some more text. It just says in Indonesian um, Deklarakan Ole PT, Pers, Rokok, Tajap, Gudingaram, TBK, Kadiri. And I do believe, if I'm remembering correctly, Kadiri is where Gudingaram cigarettes might be made. Maybe it's where the company was first founded. I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me on that. And then going around the entire design, we can see there is a white border. At the top of the packaging right here, we can see there is actually some print on the actual uh, like packaging itself, not on a sticker or something like that kind of thing. It's actually on like the sort of like corn husk, yellowish look itself that has a design on it stretching around as I talked about before. But we can see there's actually some print on the packaging itself and it just says special Gooding Aram uh, Issy 6 Batang right there, which just means that there's six cigarettes in the pack. Then towards the bottom down here, we can see that there is a yellow little sticker right here with a green border in the center right here with a bunch of text. That text just says over and over and over again, um, PT, Parashan, Rokuk, Kretek, and Siga, Ret, Kretek, Tajap, Gudingaram, TBK. And then, oh no, wait, it doesn't actually repeat over and over again. I don't think. Then it goes on to say, Kadiri, PT, Oh no, it does, it does, it does just repeat over and over again. I got, I got a little bit jumbled up there. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. But overlaid over that green text in red, we can see it just says, est moi manis? which I feel like I am pronouncing completely incorrectly, as I more than likely am, but that is the actual name of this cigarette, and that translates to special sweet in English. And that's pretty much all there is to the front of the packaging, design-wise at least. We can also see that the shape of this packaging is very, very, very different. This is essentially a piece of cigarette packaging that follows the form of the cigarettes, not the other way around, which is very different from how most cigarette packs are done today, as the vast majority of cigarette packs today are hard packs, but this is a soft pack in every way, shape, and form. The uh, Clobot cigarettes are in a conical shape, and so as such, it kind of starts off a little bit big down here and then gets thinner at, towards the top like a cone, following the shape of the Clobot cigarettes themselves, which is pretty interesting if I do say so myself. And another really interesting thing about the front of this packaging is that there is no graphic warning label. I don't know why there's no graphic warning label on the front of this pack, because from what I know, at least every other type of cigarette in Indonesia is required to have a graphic warning on the front of the pack. And apparently within Indonesia, there are two theories as to why Clobot cigarettes don't have graphic warnings on them, as it's not just this Clobot cigarette which doesn't have a graphic warning on it, it's all Clobot cigarettes that do not have graphic warnings on them. The first sort of thought 
as to why Clobot cigarettes don't have graphic warnings on them is simply due to the packaging being the size it is, and simply put the fact that putting a graphic warning on this packaging would be pretty difficult. The second thought process as to why there's no graphic warning on the front of this pack right here, on the front of any Clobot cigarette pack in general, is the fact that Clobot cigarettes are, from what I can tell, at least very much a part of Indonesian heritage. And since they're marketed as being something that is more of a niche heritage item these days, maybe the Indonesian government doesn't want to sully that look by putting a graphic warning label on it. I don't know how true either of those theories I just shared actually are, but nonetheless, it is still very interesting that there's no graphic warning on the front of this packaging. However, there are still warnings on the side of the packaging. We could just see right here in black on the actual sort of wrapper itself going around the cigarettes, we could just see it just says uh, a little bit of a warning. It just says, I'm gonna try to pronounce this. It's gonna be terrible. I do apologize. It just says, Delarang Manjual, Membri Pada Anak, Usai de Bois 18 Tahon Dan Perempuan Hamel, which I did translate before this video, and if I'm remembering correctly, that just means that um, it, it just basically says, do not sell this to individuals under 18 or pregnant women or something like that kind of thing. Then above that, we have another warning label right here, just this time outlined in black, I want to say, and it just says, Mirakok de Pat Mebakin Kanker. Sangren Jang Tung Imponsen Si Dan Gengkun Kam Halen Dan Janin or Hanen. I don't know how to pronounce it honestly. I have no clue how to speak Indonesian or how to pronounce anything in Indonesian at all, I will admit. Um, that's another warning label. I did translate that one before this video as well, but I've forgotten that one's what that one says. But I assume it just means it's, uh, if I had to guess, canker might mean cancer, uh, impotency might mean uh, impotence. So it's just another warning label just going on about the dangers of smoking and everything like that, if I had to guess. Taking a look at the other side of the packaging, we could just see the, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this side of the packaging. But taking a look at the other side of the packaging, we could see the barcode right here. And that is a big indication, of course, that this is a modern pack of Clobot cigarettes, that this is not, of course, from the early 1900s or from the 1800s or anything like that kind of thing. But we can just see the barcode right there. And then on the bottom of the barcode, it just says, KLB right there. Now, within Indonesia, there are different cigarette designations. There is um, SKT, um, SKM, uh, stuff like that kind of thing. All of them meaning different stuff. I want, if I remember correctly, SKM means machine rolled filtered Kretek, if I'm remembering correctly. SKT, I want to say, means hand-rolled. Could be wrong, don't quote me on that. But what I do know is that the one on this cigarette right here says KLB, which if I had to guess at least, means Clobot. That makes a lot of sense if you ask me, and so that's why that's my guess. But I don't know that for sure. Above the barcode right here, we could just see it just says, uh, manufactured by uh, PT Gudengaram. Uh, Kadiri, Indonesia, and then there's some numbers under that, which just read 01007231, and that's pretty much all there is to this side of the pack. At the top, of course, there's nothing going on, as there's really no room for anything to go on, and on the bottom of the packaging, it just says, once again, special Gudengaram right there, and then it just says Isi 6 Batang under the tax stamp right here, and we can see the tax stamp stretching all the way down the back of the packaging. And we can actually see the cigarettes just a little bit through the packaging as well. We can see the rubber bands that are holding them all together and everything like that kind of thing. Pretty cool stuff if I do say so myself. But I think that's pretty much all there is to the packaging. Definitely a very different look than what I'm used to from cigarette or just tobacco packaging in general. It's a very old style look, even from my United States American perspective kind of thing. This is definitely still a very much old style look, but with some modern aspects as well, such as the warning labels and tax stamp and stuff like that kind of thing. And as a whole, I certainly am looking forward to seeing how these actually are, as I'm sure is obvious. And as a whole, I like this packaging a decent amount. I definitely think it's a very different look. It's a very interesting look from what I'm used to. And I think it's pretty cool. I ain't gonna lie. It's a very, very, very nice, very, I don't know, saying retro feels kind of wrong. It's, it's very vintage, retro. I don't know. When I think vintage or retro, I think like I'm like, it's it's a sign of my age, of course, uh, as I'm like 21 years old. But um, when I think vintage or retro, I think 70s, 80s, maybe the 90s, early 90s, maybe. Um, I don't really think like really early 1900s. And I don't think this really comes off like really early 1900s packaging per se. But 
it definitely comes off as more vintage, more retro than not, and I like that quite a bit. And as a whole, I am a bigger fan than not of this packaging. I've just realized I've been talking about this packaging for a little bit longer than I was expecting, so I do suppose today I am also giving these cigarettes right here a light review as well. But I do suppose without further ado, I should probably now go ahead and get this pack of Clobot cigarettes all opened up. And there's a little bit of, I think, a pull tab on the back right here, so I'm going to go ahead and just try to pull tab just ripped off so i'm gonna go and put that little piece of plastic in my backpack and i'm gonna go ahead and try again um let's go and see if i can get this all opened up i'm not sure how to open this pack i will admit there's no sort of rip tab right here that i can just pull across i thought that was a rip tab but maybe i was incorrect i really want to get this open without damaging any of the cigarettes or anything like that kind of thing how can i get this open easily ah here we go i think this is a, another pull tab ah so you just oh <laughs> just ripped again okay maybe those are not pull tabs maybe that's just piece of this piece of the cellophane just kind of coming off that's kind of what i'm thinking along it's kind of what i'm thinking well i did bring a knife with me today i might get my knife out in just a moment because i am not sure i'm honestly not sure at all how to get this open one other thing we can see on the um tax stamp itself it actually says klb on the tax stamp uh which is pretty interesting and it just says gooding gara um a zero zero right there and i guess yeah and it says, uh, oh, it literally says Clobot right there. Pretty interesting. So, you know, this tax stamp is unique to Clobots. Uh, so there's obviously no intention by the Indonesian government to get rid of them, that is for sure. I'm going to go ahead and use my knife to uh, get this uh, pack of cigarettes all opened up, though. Hopefully without damaging any of the uh, non-cellophane packaging, as I do not want to do that. There we go, just like that. Let's just go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and unravel all of this. Just like that kind of thing. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to completely unravel this packaging, but I'm doing it nonetheless. There we go. There we go. There's just a little bit more, just kind of stuck on there kind of thing. And now that I have that all off, let's just go ahead and put my knife back in my pocket now. There's my uh, Kershaw Speed Safe. It's pretty nice. I like it quite a bit got for like i want to say 13 dollars or something like that i can't remember exactly how much there's a good deal out and right off the bat you can smell these cigarettes through the packaging now that the cellophane is all off and they smell super sweet they smell super amazing certainly no complaints on my behalf that is for sure another thing i'm confused about is how to actually get this pack of cigarettes opened up to begin with without the cellophane on though this looks even more retro even more vintage and of course it looks even better as 99.9 percent .9 of tobacco products and cigarettes as a whole do without the wrapper on without the cellophane on of course it looks a little bit better and this looks absolutely fantastic and just even more vintage and even more like retro in my opinion without the cellophane on certainly no complaints on my behalf right off the bat though i'm getting a very 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 nice smell of clove and sugar coming from the scent of these cigarettes i'm getting a really 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 nice smell of, of clove and sugar certainly no complaints on my behalf and with the cellophane off it's even easier to see these cigarettes right here in the package we can really see the rubber band very distinctly right there kind of thing that is the, the rubber band that is holding the cigarettes together and everything like that very 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 cool if i do say so myself let's go ahead and see if i can actually figure out how to get this open though and i th think i need to really don't want to break this packaging rip the label like that just a little bit oh and then i think there's a little bit of pull tab right here maybe oh no okay i think that was somewhat how i was supposed to open this packaging so let's just go ahead i'm not going to try to get this all kind of completely off and everything like that i don't want the packaging to stay somewhat intact but we can just see this is how the cigarettes are in the pack and they are right off the bat absolutely massive those are some huge cigarettes at the very top of the cigarette at least let's go ahead and see if i can get one of these cigarettes out though real quick i don't know how i'm gonna get one of them out try to get one of them out without getting too much cellophane out i'm gonna try to let's see if i, I let's see if i can get one of these out properly this packaging is um, not the most user-friendly right off the bat, I will admit. We can also see a little bit of a like clove and nicotine staining. That's pretty common for clove cigarettes as a whole, so I'm not too surprised to see it on these cigarettes either. I might have to rip this a little bit. Oh no, a little bit more than I want to. Let's 
This is hard. This is harder than not to get out, but I got a little bit. There we go. All right, I got it. There we go. Just like that. And look at this, y'all. Look at this. This is so... Oh, wait, no. It's not a rubber band. Oh, my God. It's not a rubber band. It's twine. Whoa, I thought that was a rubber band because it was green. No, that's twine. What? Okay. I can't remember if I said this earlier on in the video, but um, these days with... Oh, wait, no. Am I thinking of biddies? Because biddies use rubber bands a lot these days. Oh, I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know if I said earlier on in the video, but I was saying that these days uh, that, that Clobots um, don't use like um, gum strips on the on the corn husk paper and everything like that kind of thing. Um, instead, they used uh, instead they used rubber bands or traditionally used twine. Apparently, these ones use twine, which is very, very, very interesting if I do say so myself. Well, that is pretty dang cool. I was thinking I was supposed to roll these down as I keep smoking, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to in all honesty. I guess you're just supposed to let this kind of snap and fly off into the wind. I'm not exactly sure to be completely honest with y'all, but this, I mean, like, how much more retro <laughs> can you get than this? This is 1800 retro, yo, 1800 retro. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. This is so different looking than any other cigarette I've ever seen before. I mean, like one, it's conical for one. It's, it's a conical shape. Two, it's not rolled with paper. It's rolled with dried corn husks. So it literally looks completely different. Three, it's got string holding it all together. This is so interesting. This is so interesting. And it's actually, I'm mean, like pretty decently sized as well kind of thing. I'm like, this is what it is. Like, compared to my nose kind of thing. I'm like, it might be bigger than my nose, but my nose, I'm like, it'd be a little bit big kind of thing. So it's a little bit surprising that is for sure. But I mean, like, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big cigarette. Wow. I'm honestly kind of at a loss for, for what to say in all honesty, because I knew that these were going to look really different, but like, what do I say about this? I'm like, it's not really like there's any like print on the cigarette itself or anything like that kind of thing. I'm like, look wise, it's literally just a corn husk rolled cigarette. And it just looks so different from what I've ever seen before. I kind of just want to sit here and just kind of just look at it because it just, it, it's so different from what I've ever seen before that it, I know it's going to smoke. I know it's going to smoke, but it's just if I if I saw this, I would be like, what? Like, yeah, you're, you're smoking that? What What the hell is that kind of thing? And now I'm looking at myself like, what the, what, what the hell? You're about to smoke this thing kind of thing? What the hell is that? I guess that's kind of why I'm kind of at a loss for words because I'm just kind of like, it's just so different from what I've ever seen before. I've never seen a corn husk rolled cigarette in person before, and this certainly is very, very, very different looks very interesting quality wise seems to be rolled very nicely very 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 tightly as well so i'm definitely expecting the uh, draw and airflow to be much tighter and much heavier than not smell wise very 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 sweet clove scent coming off right off the bat really no tobacco smell that i can tell uh, at least uh, there's really no tobacco smell that i can uh, tell of at least let me just put it that way kind of thing and as a whole this is so cool. I mean, like, this is literally, this is literally 1800s retro, not 1970s retro. This is 1800s retro. This is literally an 1800 cigarette that is still made today. How many cigarettes are still on the market today? I don't even know if these were actually made on the, I don't, I don't even know if these cigarettes were even on the market and if these specific varieties of Gooding Rums were even on the market in the 1800s. But I mean, like, what, ver what what cigarettes can you say are still made in the exact same fashion as they were back in the 1800s? Not many, not many. What is it? It's like these and probably Palheros from uh, from uh, from from Brazil, and I, I do suppose like traditional unfiltered cigarettes as well because they were made in like the 1800s in America and Europe and stuff like that. But still, still, this is like 1800s vintage right here. This is such an interesting looking cigarette, and I certainly am thinking it's going to be really interesting smoking as well. I think there's only one more thing for me to do, and that is to actually go ahead and get it lit up, though. Excuse me. <clears throat> Gotta make sure I get some water in my system, as I am expecting. This cigarette right here to be a little bit rougher than not, that is for sure. But I do suppose, without further ado, I think it's now time for me to go ahead and get this. An Indonesian Klobot cigarette all lit up. 
and it's time for me to smoke an Indonesian Klobot cigarette for the first time. I am expecting this to be a little bit hard to light up, but there's only one way to find out, and that is to go ahead and get it all lit up. Yes, sir, yes, sir, you know what I'm saying? Whoa, 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 right off that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right off the bat, hold up, hold up real quick. The tip of this is sweet. <laughs> The tip of this, this is sweetened. The tip of this is sweetened. Oh my God, they sweetened the tip of a corn husk rolled cigarette. <laughs> bruh, bruh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. I wonder if they were sweetening the tips of these back in the 1800s. That is so amusing. Yeah, it's literally sweetened. I'm getting a sweetened taste on my lips. That is so dang interesting. What? I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. That is so funny. I ain't gonna lie, that is so funny. Well, now that I've covered that as well, let's go ahead and get this cigarette right here all it up. Yes, sir, yes, sir, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying. And right off the bat, definitely a different taste from what I'm used to, of course. And I think this is definitely a little bit harder to light up than not. And wow, my tongue is already fully numb. Now, granted, I haven't smoked a clove cigarette at all in, I want to say, over a month now. So I'm not too surprised that it's my, my entire mouth is already numb, but my tongue is already so numb. Oh, my God. I'm not sure how you're supposed to light this, in all honesty. We can see it crackling, we can see it uh, sounding like a Cretex should. There we go, I think it's smoking a little bit better now. Not exactly sure though, I will admit. But wow, right off the bat, my entire tongue is completely numb. My entire tongue is completely numb. That's so intense. That clove is insane, y'all. <sighs> very, very, very interesting smoke right off the bat. I'd have to say, initially, the clove taste is extremely potent, and it's really the main overall taste. But there is another taste in there as well. And I would have to say it's the corn husk taste. Of course, it doesn't taste like corn, but it's definitely a different taste that I don't feel like is coming from the tobacco and I don't feel like is coming from the clove. It's a very sort of, I'd have to say, natural sort of almost, yeah, natural sort of almost paper taste, which makes sense because corn husk is a very natural almost paper Definitely quite the different smoke as well. Definitely quite the different smoke as well. I wonder, am I supposed to, I'm probably supposed to open this and so I can get a little bit of better airflow now, aren't I? Ah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. That was the issue. Oh my goodness. Wow. The clove is insanely overwhelming. I would have to say, while I've smoked some really intensely like tarry and, and very, very, very intensely clove, Indonesian clove Kretex cigarettes before. This is the most intensely clovey. This is the most intensely, I'd have to say mouth numbing, which is pretty nuts if I do say so myself. And I do think real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and try to grab myself a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a screenshot if I possibly can.
quite rough as well, if I do say so myself, quite rough. Oh my goodness. Hopefully, one of those uh, little uh, frames will do as a screenshot. We will find out, you know what I'm saying? We will find out. But, man, oh man, let me tell y'all what. The clove is just insanely overwhelming, and I'm definitely able to feel some of the nicotine as well. It is pretty, excuse me, pretty wild if I do say so myself. My tongue right now is completely numb, and these are quite rough as well if I do say so myself as well. And we can see a little bit of the tar coming through as well. I'm going to go ahead and test the body real quick. Body is, of course, absolutely massive. The airflow is not as constricted as I was kind of afraid it was going to be. And the draw... Now that I've gotten past the first initial point, is actually quite wide open and is a little bit lighter than not, but it does still have a little bit of weight to it, but it's definitely a much lighter draw than not, I will admit, which is a little bit of a surprise, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. This is canoeing just a little bit, and the ash as a whole as well, due to the corn husk uh, being the wrapper of the cigarette, is uh, quite flaky, but I'm gonna go ahead and just try to fix this canoe real quick if I possibly can. just like that try to fix it and i'm gonna go ahead and just ash this cigarette real quick it doesn't really seem to want to ash very well i will admit that's definitely different from um what i'm used to as well it's definitely much more flaky ash and the corn husk you can definitely tell is very 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 thick and so as such the ash is very flaky and it really does not want to ash super well and surprisingly as well, I can definitely tell that the um, tobacco on the inside is not the most tightly rolled. Now, these are hand-rolled from what I know at least, and so as such, it wouldn't surprise me if it varies cigarette to cigarette just how tightly rolled the cigarette actually is, but at least with this one, it's not super tightly rolled. <sighs> Staying lit pretty well as well. I cannot complain, you know what I'm saying? I cannot complain. And this cigarette, if I had to guess, is going to be quite the long smoke as well. I'm like, we're not even halfway through yet. We're not even halfway through. And I mean, like, I do figure it's probably going to start smoking faster as we get towards the end just because there's less material to burn away. But still. So what is the actual taste I'm getting from this, though? Well, I'd have to say the taste is... Very similar yet different to clove cigarettes I've gotten before. I'm really getting... I'm, I'm not getting any distinctly tobacco taste in there. I'm sure there's a tobacco taste in there. It's just combined so well with the clove taste that I'm not really able to tell it apart anymore. The taste I'm getting from the clove itself, and maybe from the tobacco as well, um, is very much a... I would have to say... Uh, I'm getting very much a... Very sweet, almost excuse me, almost citrusy, fruity taste. And that taste is also exemplified by the sugar on the tip of the um, Clobot as well. Yeah, I'd have to say the taste I'm getting as a whole, oh wow, yeah, very much, yeah. It does kind of leave me wondering how much of that is the clove taste and how much of that is the actual tobacco taste itself. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I haven't smoked enough clove cigarettes to really be able to distinguish between a certain clove taste and a certain tobacco taste yet. Um, I'm sure some of y'all have. I personally have not, though. But I'm just going to describe the taste as a whole. And the taste as a whole is, is very much as I said it previously was. It is very much a very, very, very nice, sugary, sweet, citrusy, fruit-like taste, almost like, I'd have to say, a little bit of Granny Smith apple, as there's also a little bit of tanginess to the citrusy taste. And then there's also a little bit of... Hmm. 
There's also a little bit of sourness in there as well. There's also a little bit of sourness in, the, as, in there as well. To me, at least, the taste of this cigarette is very much like that of a very, and I'm going to see if I can bring this down a little bit. No, that's not going to be brought down anymore. Um, the taste to me, at least, is very much that of a sort of very nice, citrusy, sour Granny Smith apple with clove in there. That's very much what the taste is like to me, and it tastes pretty dang good. This would pair really well with some apple slices from McDonald's, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I did just get a little bit of tobacco or clove in my mouth. This is unfiltered, so it's really no surprise, I do suppose. But as a whole, yeah, this is really, really, really good. Roughness and smoothness-wise, I'd have to say this is definitely one of the roughest clove cigarettes I have had to date. Roughness-wise, this is very much like an 8 out of 10, maybe a 9 out of 10. It's much more rough than not. <sighs> Although, I'm talking by my standards, not by Indonesian standards, so who knows how rough this is to the typical, to the, excuse me, to the typical consumer in Indonesia. And we can see the band is now unwinding and everything like that kind of thing. Hopefully it doesn't completely start unraveling as soon as that band goes away and everything like that. And yeah, as we're getting towards the uh, middle of the uh, cigarette, now towards the middle of the Clobot, I definitely have to say it is just getting rougher and rougher and rougher kind of thing. This is some rough stuff. Definitely like an 8 or a 9 out of 10 in my personal opinion. And strength-wise, it is pretty dang strong. Both tar-wise and nicotine-wise, my throat, I can definitely feel a bunch of tar in there kind of thing. A lot of the roughness is just because of the tar. And I've been smoking tarry cigarettes by American standards these days, and they do not compare to this at all. Um, and strength-wise, I am feeling pretty dang buzz right now as well. So I definitely have to say, yeah, these are much stronger cigarettes than not. The uh, 32 milligrams of tar seems a little bit low in my personal opinion, but the 1.9 milligrams of nicotine that I stated at the very beginning of this video um, sounds about right. Sounds about right. These are definitely stronger than not, that is for sure. Yeah. Scrumptious. Absolutely scrumptious smokes. There is, I will admit as well, a little bit of a taste coming from the corn paper itself, from the corn wrapper itself. And I talked a little bit about it at the very beginning of this smoke, when I first started smoking this Clobot right here, but I didn't really cover it in any depth. So what is the taste of that actually like? Well, the taste is, in my personal opinion, very much a sort of, I'd have to say, it's very much a, hmm. It's very much a sort of very natural taste. And it's not super overwhelming. Like, I've tried, like, hemp rolling papers before and, and stuff like that kind of thing, and all of those have a very natural taste to them. But it's a very overwhelming taste. And for that reason, it's not really all that much to my liking. But with the clove and tobacco mixed together inside of a corn wrapper, the corn wrapper taste is not so overwhelming. Like, it's still in there for sure. You could still taste the corn wrapper. Just a little bit. It's just like a very natural, I'd have to say even slightly sweet taste kind of thing. Not bad at all. And... I have tried corn rolling paper before, and it does taste a little bit similar to corn rolling paper, but very, but not very different, but different, of course, at the same time, um, as this is literally a real corn husk. But due to the actual mixture of stuff inside, excuse me, inside this cigarette right here, it's actually, it's actually not as overwhelming of a taste, definitely not as overwhelming of a taste as I thought it was going to be. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. <sighs> very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Wow. It's a good smoke. And definitely burning very, very, very slowly as well. I was thinking at first because of the, um, 
paper that it was going to burn really, really, really quickly um, because the corn husk, because when I was first getting it lit up, the corn husk was starting to burn really quickly. Um, but no, it's actually been burning very, very, very slowly, I assume, due to the clove on the inside of it. Because cloves, clove cigarettes in general, burn so dang slowly. What are my thoughts on this when compared to other Indonesian clove cigarettes I've tried before? I've tried both filtered and unfiltered hand-rolled Indonesian clove cigarettes previously from Indonesia itself, um, including Gudang Rum, Sampurnas, and uh, some um, Dejerums as well. Um, and I'd have to say when compared to those, this is definitely a little bit different, but it is quite similar because it's still got clove in it. And, but, but you can definitely tell there is a significant difference being made by the corn husk wrapper itself. You can definitely tell there is a significant difference being made not only taste-wise, but just smoking-wise as a whole. This hits differently throat-wise than a normal clove cigarette. A normal clove cigarette might be rough, and it might be really tarry, but it doesn't quite hit like this does. This, on the other hand, it kind of like spikes. I'd have to say, hmm. I'd have to say with like a normal clove cigarette, if my memory is correct at least, it's kind of like a slow burning roughness kind of thing. Whereas this, on every single hit, it just spikes and spikes and spikes your throat. Really, really, really rough, just kind of spikes it. Excuse me. And yeah, it is... Re it is pretty rough, definitely. I mean, like, even when compared to other clove cigarettes in Indonesia, in my opinion, this is pretty rough, and it is some good stuff. It is some good stuff, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I just realized, I knew, I, I mentioned, I don't, I, I, I've got more of a up. I mentioned, I was forgetting to mention something at the very beginning of this video, and I completely forgot to mention that these... Indonesian clobots were sent to me by uh, an anonymous viewer. They were given to me by an anonymous viewer, which I am very appreciative of, um, because otherwise I wouldn't have the opportunity to try these for quite a while. Um, so they were sent to me, or given to me, uh, to say it correctly, uh, by an Indonesian viewer, an anonymous Indonesian viewer, and I am very, very, very thankful for their contribution to the channel, that is for sure. Yeah, wow. I am impressed. I am impressed, y'all. And where are we are just like now reaching the halfway point. This is even more long burning. I mean, like a lot of the clove cigarettes I've tried have been like solid 15 minute smokers without talking and 20 minute smokers with talking. This is more like almost a 30 minute smoking cigarette. This is like a cigarello. That's how long this cigarette takes to smoke. It's like a cigarello. It's wild, absolutely crazy. And it's giving me a good buzz. I'm feeling very nice right now, to say the least. Whew. Yeah. Would I smoke Clobot cigarettes again after this experience? Yeah, 100%. I totally would smoke Clobot cigarettes again. I totally would. 100%. This is a good smoke. This is a really good smoke. I'm really, really, really enjoying it. Would I buy other packs besides this one? Yeah, 100%. Could I smoke them on a routine basis? Oh, I will admit, not really. I could not smoke these on a routine basis. These would have to be like a special occasion thing for me. They're just too much. And even for the amount of roughness I'm used to from cigarettes, these are still really rough. But they are insanely good. They are insanely good as well. These are, by all means, one of the most unique smoking, tasting, looking, packaging-wise, cigarette-wise as a whole, cigarettes I've ever had. Really, really, really unique, and a very, very, very interesting smoking, smoke sesh. This, is, this has been a very interesting smoke sesh, to say the least. Whew. That was rough. I need a sip of water. I say as I've got to piss. I've got to piss. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. And I, I need a sip of water. So I'm gonna go and take a little bit of a sip of water real quick. I 
I think I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of summarizing my thoughts on this specific Clobot cigarette right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and summarize what the taste is like and everything like that kind of thing. Then after that, I think as I'm continuing to smoke this, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts on Clobots as a whole. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and give this specific Clobot a rating, as I do think I'm kind of turning this into a little bit of a review. And I think after that, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this off and uh, finish off the video right there. And this is once again canoeing, so I am gonna try to fix that once again. There we go. Hopefully that fixed the canoe just a little bit. We will see. But, but, what is uh, my summary for my final thoughts on this specific Clobot cigarette? Well, taste-wise, I would have to say the taste is very much that of a very sweet, sugary, sort of citrusy, sour granny smith apple it very much tastes like that in my personal opinion with an undertone of clove of course and with also an undertone of a sort of sweet almost straw taste kind of thing a very natural sweet straw taste i definitely have to say and that's very much what the taste is like i definitely have to say to summarize and of course, I'm also getting, oh, sh I, I can't cuss, I can't cuss. This is a family-friendly channel, of course. Just kidding, this, my channel is definitely not family-friendly, but I'm not gonna cuss nonetheless. But I'm definitely also getting a ton of, uh, <laughs> a ton of clove in my mouth. My, 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 my tongue has been completely numb since I've got this uh, cigarette all lit up. I cannot complain. And I'd have to say, airflow-wise, the airflow as a whole, more so than not all throughout the cigarette, has been surprisingly wide open and not particularly constricted by any means. And so as such, the draw has been much more so than not very wide open all throughout this uh, smoking experience as well, which is quite interesting if I do say so myself. Roughness and smoothness wise, these cigarettes are definitely much rougher than not. I'd have to say this is probably one of the roughest cigarettes I have ever smoked, even though it's not one of the most tarry cigarettes I've ever smoked. I'd have to say roughness and smoothness wise, these are very much like an eight or a nine out of 10 kind of thing. Really, really, really rough. Probably more like a nine out of 10 if I had to say, and the roughness hits a little bit different than your normal traditional cigarette as well take this little band off uh, just a little bit as well kind of thing if I can oopsies there we go I'm just gonna go on ashes real quick and it is starting to unravel just a little bit but I'm just gonna keep it in between my hands and I think I think you might only be able, I think you, excuse me, I've got more on all up. I think you might only be meant to smoke this cigarette up until that point, in all honesty, because it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty much unraveling now. I'm actually just going to go ahead and unravel. Well, I don't know if it's actually a good idea for me to unravel this. I might try to keep smoking it. <sighs> nah, it's still smokable. It's still smokable. Okay. You're not meant to smoke, you're not, you're not meant to end smoking this until you're absolutely done, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm going to do. But... I was thinking I was going to unravel it, and then I started unraveling, and it actually was a little bit sticky on the inside, which was pretty interesting. Um, but what was I about to say? Um, roughness and smoothness-wise, this is definitely one of the roughest cigarettes I've ever had. At a roundabout, I'd have to say a 9 out of 10, and the roughness definitely hits a decent amount differently than normal cigarettes, whether they be clove or not. Whether they be clove or Cretex cigarettes or not. And strength-wise, this is very much like an uh, I'd have to say like a 9 out of 10 kind of thing. It's a strong cigarette. I've been pretty buzzed ever since I lit this cigarette up. I really cannot complain, that is for sure. And as a whole, to summarize my thoughts on this cigarette, excuse me, 
it is pretty dang good. It is pretty dang good. It is a very enjoyable cigarette. So what is my rating for the Gudangaram Clobot Cretex cigarettes? What's my rating for these cigarettes right here? Well, my rating for them, I think, is going to be a solid, oh, I'd have to say 9 out of 10. I'd have to say 9 out of 10. They're not something I could smoke on a super consistent basis. These could not be my daily smokes. They're too much. But they are fantastic special occasion smokes. And they are, I think these would be amazing to whip out at parties kind of thing. These are really, really, really good smokes. Very, very, very enjoyable. And they definitely are deserving of the 9 out of 10 rating in my personal opinion. So what are my initial thoughts on Clobot cigarettes as a whole, though? Well, I think they're definitely quite different. They are significantly different, I would have to say, than... There's a lot of ash on the table that's been bothering me for a minute. Um, they are, I would have to say, quite different from normal clove cigarettes, but not super significantly so. The main difference really is in roughness, and in look and in how they hit roughness and smoothness wise along with you getting that little bit of a sort of corn husk like taste in there as well i would have to say those are the main differences between this a clobot cretex cigarette and a normal cigarette paper rolled Cretex cigarette. Those really are the main differences in my personal opinion. Yeah, those really are the main differences. And as a whole, this is absolutely fantastic. If I had to choose one over the other, which one would I choose? That's really difficult because honestly, I really like both. I really like clove cigarettes rolled with normal cigarette paper, and I really like this as well. This is absolutely fantastic. I really like both of them, and honestly, I can't put one over the other. They are different enough, yet similar enough, to be two distinctly kind of different things. And they, they're they really good. They're really good, very enjoyable smokes as a whole. Um, when compared to normal clove cigarettes, they definitely hit a little bit different, but not too much. If you've smoked an Indonesian clove cigarette before, this is not gonna be too different from what you're used to. That is, if you've smoked an unfiltered Indonesian clove cigarette before, if you haven't smoked one of those, this is definitely going to be extremely diff different. But honestly, to my personal surprise, this wasn't, this cigarette right here was not insanely different from any other Kretek clove cigarette I've had before from Indonesia. Different for sure, but not like entirely different. It wasn't like a completely new cigarette. It was just different. Taste is absolutely fantastic. And I'll, I'll, there's also a little bit of like, I'd have to say like an almost cinnamon-like taste in there as well kind of thing, which I'm now just now noticing. A little bit of like a cinnamon taste on top of that sort of like Granny Smith apple taste as well kind of thing. Absolutely fantastic. I would have to say taste-wise, these are probably most similar to the Gudangaram Surya's in all honesty. Most similar to the Gudangaram Surya 12s. Um, was it the 12s or was it not? I can't remember. Just most similar to the Gudangaram, ah, Surya Miles. Those are the one I've tried. Most similar to the Gudangaram Surya Miles, I definitely have to say. And I think it's pretty much just about out. I don't really think there's much more to smoke, in all honesty. I think before the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and stub this out on the ground, and I'm just going to go ahead and unravel it just a little bit just to show you guys what the inside of this looks like. But... This is really, really, really long smoking as well. I lit this cigarette up at just about the 30 minute mark. And while I've been talking a decent amount in this video, I've also been puffing away a decent amount as well. This is by all means an over 30 minute smoking cigarette. That is, pardon my French, fucking nuts. That is absolutely crazy if I do say so myself. I'm gonna go ahead and stub this out on the ground now. I think I'm all done and stubs out pretty easily and we can see all of the ash right there it's still smoking just a little bit but i'm just going to go ahead and get this all opened up and we can see the actual tobacco itself on the inside right there pretty interesting if i do say so myself and it's just all kind of crumbling now but you know 
That's what the inside of one of these looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, throw all the tobacco on the ground, make sure it's all stubbed out and everything like that kind of thing. Thankfully, tobacco is a biodegradable good, and I do suppose I could litter this as well because this is biodegradable, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna leave it on the table and throw it away after this video. But this experience as a whole has been very interesting. This experience as a whole has been very interesting. I would have to say just as, if not more interesting than I thought smoking an Indonesian Clobot cigarette was gonna be for the first time. Just as, if not more interesting than I thought this experience was gonna be. Super cool experience to have. Thank you so much once again to the anonymous viewer who was nice enough to give me some of the Guding Aram um, Clobot uh, Kretek cigarettes from Indonesia. Thank you so much, my man. I really do appreciate it. Um, I think that's all I had to say. I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video where I smoked a uh, Indonesian Clobot cigarette for the first time. If you guys have enjoyed watching this video, of course, uh, please make sure to like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my PO box, and my second channel all in the description down below. Go check it all out. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, y'all. Till the next one, stay safe and peace and have a great one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying?